Hi guys, my name is Ken from Cacao Culture and you're watching our vlog, Planting Chocolate Trees. So in this episode, we're talking to Max Gandhi of DameCacao.com. She visited us recently in Davao City and her goal is to be able to talk to some cacao farmers and also uh, chocolate makers in Davao. During her visit, we were able to show her around. We brought her to Macau City, uh, to the different chocolate makers in Davao City, and also we visited uh, Kamdon Farms in Tupi, South Cotabano. So Max actually has a website called DameCacao.com. She goes on these adventures and travels around Asia for now and interviews and talk to uh, different uh, chocolate makers around Asia. So I'm Max Gandhi. I'm the blogger and podcaster behind DameCacao.com as well as the Chocolate on the Road podcast. So can you share where you uh, grew up originally and then what you are doing now? So I write about chocolate and travel. So I'm originally from Washington DC in the US and then right after I finished university, I moved to South Korea. I now live in the countryside of South Korea and now I've been traveling around Asia. When did the fascination with cacao and chocolate start for you? One of the women who's really had a, a very big influence upon the craft chocolate, fine chocolate culture in the US and she just sort of mentor to me, her big inspiration to me. And over the years, I immediately started sharing bars with friends, but slowly started sharing more and more on social media, and then eventually starting the blog in early 2015. And then when I started studying abroad, sharing even more and more, and it's just continued to consume my life in a good way. You also wanted to study in the Philippines because yeah. Kakao was here. So how, how did that thought of studying here came about and how it, how it didn't push through for you? To study cacao growing and cacao farming and chocolate making because I thought I wanted to become a chocolate maker. Yeah. And I learned more about cacao growing and I studied in Guatemala and Ecuador and Peru. I wanted to study in three countries, which were the first ones on their continent to have cacao grown there. In Asia, it was the Philippines. Mm. So I then started studying a bit more about how cacao came to the Philippines, where it was grown. And we are very glad that you're able to visit Davao now. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> it's been on my list. What are the certain reasons why you would want to visit Davao City? The thought of coming to Davao on my own, just like trying to find cacao farms wasn't that appealing okay. and there weren't really people who were looking for it as far as I could tell. There wasn't much visibly happening with chocolate and I couldn't find much information. I think that's a lesson for most of the farmers or processors here is that they need to be more visible online. Oh absolutely yeah. and without good yeah. marketing you can't get good exposure and without exposure you're not going to be able to sell as much. That's correct. So you're, you've written an article called Millennials in Chocolate where you featured different millennials doing work with cacao and with chocolate around the world. So what inspired you to write that article? So for years, I had been told that cacao farmers, the average age is around 50. Mm -hmm. And I'd been noticing that a lot of young people were becoming more and more interested in this specific sector of cacao, not just like continuing to operate their grandfather's cacao farm, but entering this market of cacao and of chocolate production. And have become more interested in telling their own stories mm. and not just the stories of themselves as people but the stories of their land and the farm yeah they're giving a lot more context to these products and that really resonated with me because that was what I was trying to do on the blog itself and now in the podcast so it's just a lot of young people 
who haven't had the exposure, just like cacao farmers in the Philippines, for the most part. I wanted to give them a platform to talk more about their stories. So that's why I wrote the article. And in terms of the talking to all these people you interview, what themes or overarching themes would you find similar globally? We've all been influenced a lot more by the internet and also by social media sites. So a lot of people were marketing their chocolate or became interested in chocolate or cacao because of an interest in health. Mm, okay. And then an interest in eating more locally or sourcing more locally. So those are two really big themes that I saw, like not just in the people who are in the chocolate industry, but the people who are buying the chocolate and buying the cacao products themselves. Other than that, just people who are interested in telling stories that haven't been told for way too long. Yeah, that's true. I think here in the Philippines, there's a rich history of cacao, of chocolate preparation, tablet drinking. But like you said, it's never really been recorded, never really passed down. The industry is like, I would say like a baby, just yeah. recent thing. It's very an infant industry. Uh, craft That's chocolate so making in the Philippines is very young. And I think it's proper time to really document their stories and sharing it. But there's a definite difference between having the ability to tell the stories and actually telling the stories. So part of why I'm interested in telling these stories is because I know that I have the ability to tell them in a way that stays true to the people who are actually telling them. How do you see Philippine chocolate, Philippine cacao industry on the very maybe first impressions? Very underdeveloped in terms of the products that people are making and also consumer knowledge of the products. Filipino chocolate is, is one thing, but I think the next level is if people can import bean to bar chocolates from other places because having a standard that Filipino cacao is needing or surpassing is important for Filipino consumers to see. Because it's one thing to compare the mass-produced Filipino chocolates to like fine flavor, high quality Filipino chocolates, but if you can also then compare them even further to imported chocolates, that gives Filipino people even more pride in their local products because they're just as good as the other products and maybe they thought that before, but now it's like... There's a validation for it. Yeah. So a couple of hours ago, I added the honey powder and some regular cane sugar and I wish I had smell of this one. And I'm sure Ken and Sheila will leave a link in the description below, yeah. but subscribe. <laughs> it's Dame Cacao on Instagram, website, and then Chocolate on the Road is the name of the podcast, which you can also find on the website. Guys, that's it for uh, Max and Dame Cacao. So we hope that you enjoyed uh, listening to us and we hope to see you soon in the next episode. Bye! Bye!